Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you a new machine I've been working on for the past few weeks. Um, this is a rock crusher. Uh, we had picked up a silver mine in New Mexico, and so we figured we needed one now more than ever. So I have been working on this for a while. Um, as of right now, I'm actually making repairs to it and figured this would be the perfect time to make a video. Um, I'll show you what had actually broke, but a shaft is supposed to be coming out here, and there's chains that hang on it and swing around in here and crush the rock. Uh, here's some of the stuff we've been crushing. This is still left in the drum that needs to be processed down a bit more. And then this is how it comes out. It's like a flower. You can see when you compress it, it keeps its shape. Um, it's all ran off of a $100 special Briggs & Stratton. It's a 212cc, 6.5 horsepower motor. Nothing special about it, so it's just like a, a lawnmower engine. Um, and you have a pulley here that will run to this pulley that's up here with the belt. Um, what had actually broke is this drive shaft. Um, these holes are where the chains had linked in. These are the chains here. And uh, it would spin around and crush the rock. And we had one of the holes tear out. And as you can see, the other holes were not far behind. Um, and here's the chain that had fallen off and got ran through the crusher. Uh, it's pretty mangled, or at least this this uh, clip is. I should be able to probably use that chain. This is some pretty hard chain. I tried to take the uh, bolt cutters to the chain and didn't even scratch it. Um, but you'll have these hooks that go into the hole like that. Now, what I am working on now as a replacement is using these cutoffs from the chain. Uh, to weld on to the shaft like this. I'm figuring this stuff is harder than any other steel I'm using, so that I'm hoping won't break as long as my welds hold. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these welded on. I have to also drill a hole in the top here uh, for the screw and the pulley to go to drive down into. Um, but as soon as I am done with that, I will pop the video back on and uh, show you the next part. Okay, so I had gotten this for the most part finished up. I've still got some grinding left to do on it. Um, but I've got my hole drilled right up top here, and I've got these links welded on. They should hold pretty well. And that hole at the top is for this screw, so when I put it on, it doesn't twist and turn. Now, what we'll end up, what we'll end up having to do once I get done grinding this is this will go right through here into the bearing out back with the pulley. And then the chains will attach and spin and crush. So let me finish. Go ahead. All right, let me finish grinding this, and I will get the chains on and get it in here, and then uh, I'll start shooting video again and show you how it works. Okay. Just wanted to give an update again. Um, went ahead and got all this in and got the chains put on. As you can see, it uses these rings here. I think this is going to work out pretty well. Now, whenever you are making one of these and you're placing these chains in here. You want to make sure uh, that the this locking ring is swinging in such a fashion that this uh, nut here is not hitting the rocks. Uh, for instance, this turns counterclockwise. So as these spin around, they will be spinning around like this. And the back of this ring is going to be what strikes the rock. Now you're you're going to get some rocks that hits this uh, nut up top here every now and then, but uh, what that does is, is allows you to save these rings. These are significantly more expensive than the chain itself. And uh, if you can't get this open to replace the chain, you're going to have to cut it, which means you have to buy a new one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this door put on. Uh, it requires that you slide the, uh, the rod through here on the bearing and then get four bolts on these brackets here. Um, I can't do that while holding the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and get that taken care of and fire the camera back up. Okay, so i got it all put together now. It's ready to fire up for the first time since I replaced this. We're going to fire to find out how well it works. Um, now, this motor starts up really good. I'm pretty sure I could start it with one hand. Uh, whenever I first bought it, it fired right up after I put oil and gas in it on the very first pull, which is pretty unusual. So, uh, 
this thing's pretty loud, so if you have your microphone or your speakers turned up on your computer or whatever you're listening to, I might turn it down if I were you because I'm going to go ahead and throw a few rocks in if this works. Uh, here's some of the rocks we got here. Um, they're nothing special. They're not gold ore or anything like that. They're just rocks I picked up for this video here. Uh, but I'll show you how fast it crushes them up. So let's get this started real quick. So I went ahead and crushed those rocks, and as you can see, this is what comes out. It's really fine. I don't know if I can get focused up on that. Um, I would. I don't have any meshes fine enough to mesh it, but I would say that's probably 100, 200 mesh there. But this is going to work really nice down at the mine. Now, one thing I need to do, or at least I'd like to do, is put a tensioner on this uh, belt here. There's not a whole lot of tension to be had, but it does like to wobble around when, when running because this is not weighted perfectly, and uh, so it really f starts flopping every now and then. Uh, tensioner on this would be nice just to keep things from shaking so much. Um, I'll give you guys an update as soon as I get more of it done, and uh, probably right before we head down to the mine. Uh, which I'm going to have a lot of videos for at the mine, and you'll see this thing in action pretty much running full time, as long as I can work all the bugs out.